بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ان دس لیکچر آئی ول ٹیل یو اباؤٹ دا آر ایچ بلڈ ٹائپس اینڈ اٹس ریلیٹڈ ڈیزیز دیٹ از ریتھرو بلاسٹوسس فیٹیلس ریگارڈنگ دا آر ایچ گروپ This is a very specific group in which we have the antigen and no antibody. On this basis, if anyone have antigen, it will be called as Rh positive. If there is no antigen, it will be called as Rh. आर एच नेगेटिव सो आइदर द एंटीजेन इज प्रेजेंट और इट इज नॉट प्रेजेंट ऑन दैट बेसिस वी हैव ओनली टू टाइप्स ऑफ द आर एच ग्रुप्स दैट इज आर एच पॉजिटिव एंड आर एच नेगेटिव वेन एवर वी ट्रांसफ्यूज ब्लड from one person to the other person we determine firstly the blood groups of both and then do cross matching regarding blood groups we determine abo system and the other thing is rh group so it is as important as the abo group after the cross matching we transfuse blood from donor to the recipient regarding rh group if we transfuse negative group to anyone that is it has no antigen and no antibody nothing there will be no reaction if we transfuse positive to the same positive group again there will be no reaction no complication but the condition become complicated when we transfuse positive group to the negative group then there is chances of reaction between the positive and the negative groups and this reaction may create complications and dangerous condition on the other hand o negative is the universal donor in the last lecture we have discussed the universal donor and the recipient regarding the abo group and now i am telling you that the o negative that is rh group is negative that is the universal donor as negative has no antigen no antibody no antigen nothing is present so there there will be no chance for any type of the reaction if you inject rh negative to the rh negative group or rh positive group this is a figure to show you the rh antigen rh positive and rh negative there are six common types of rh antigens each of which is called an rh vector and these are c d e capital and also small a person who has a c antigen does not have the c small antigen so if capital is present small will be absent but the person missing capital c antigen always says the c small antigen the same is true for dd and ee antigens regarding the prevalence of the d antigen is widely prevalent and more antigenic than other rh antigens and person is called rh positive whereas 
who do, does not have any type of the D antigen that will be Rh negative as I have already told you. But here I am repeating thing not only the positive and negative but I am saying that D antigen is the most prevalent. This is the thing. So the Rh D antigen that is mostly present and if it is present that will be Rh positive. If it is not present that will be Rh negative. Regarding Rh antibodies, they do not occur naturally but are synthesized by an Rh negative person in response to Rh positive RPCs. So if there is mismatch blood transfusion, only then the antibodies regarding the Rh group that will be produced. Otherwise, they are not naturally present as we have in ABO system. In ABO system, antigen of the person is present and antibodies related to the other thing. So that they may react with the foreign antigen. Naturally, antibodies they are present but regarding Rh group, they will be produced in response to foreign antigen at that time. The most common commonest disease regarding the Rh incompatibility is the erythroblastosis vitalis about which you have a great knowledge previously also in lower classes in intermediate classes maybe during your matriculation. Here I am telling you the more details about this disease. This is a disease in which Rh incompatibility take place. How? When the mother is Rh negative and the father is Rh positive. So the baby may be either Rh positive or Rh negative. In the pregnancy, the baby is attached to the mother, not the father. So, their groups, mother and the baby, that must be according to each other. They must match to each other. If there is mismatching between these groups, that will create the problem. So, if the mother is Rh negative and baby is Rh positive, the baby may be Rh negative because of the mother, then there will be no problem. But because of the father, if it is Rh positive, that will create a problem. What happens at the time of delivery? Rh positive cells from fetus enters the mother. Mother's immune system response develops antibodies to Rh positive cells from the fetus. During second pregnancy, now the mother already has antibodies in her blood. Again, if the baby born that is Rh positive that will create the problem. But you must understand this thing that the thing which I am explaining now that is the very very simplest form of Rh incompatibility. But the story is not ends here. I will discuss the other conditions also what happens but I am discussing the simplest thing firstly then I will tell you the more complex things later on. Now what happens in second pregnancy? Mother is already Rh negative and have 
the antibodies in her blood against rh positive so during second pregnancy there may be chances that these antibodies cross placenta reach to the baby to react what happens that will create the disease condition so antibodies to rh positive cells enter fetal circulation you can see from here and then that will create the problem the further disease of the baby wholly solely depend upon this antigen antibody reaction if there is a great the stronger antigen antibody reaction it can ends on erythroblastosis vitalis otherwise we can have other conditions now i am coming to the first slide again up till now i told you the simplest story but actually what happens now i am going to explain it clearly this is the first pregnancy during first pregnancy if this will be the condition that is mother is rh negative and baby is rh positive it is not fixed that only at the time of the delivery mismatch blood transfusion take place no the antigen antibody reaction can take place at any time what happens if it take place at birth or it may take place before birth whenever it occurs there will be antigen antibody reaction and the strength of this reaction depends upon how much it is strong and how much antigen is going to react here and producing the antibodies then it can come again um, in the fetal circulation and it will damage the fetal parts it will be harmful to the fetus how much depending upon the strength of the antigen antibody reaction it is not fixed that it will be um, it will occur in the second pregnancy or third pregnancy whenever there is this condition exist rh negative mother and rh positive fetus whenever this is present there is always at all times there is chance for mismatch blood transfusion against mother and the fetus and what will be the appearance or damage to the fetus that depends upon the severity of antigen antibody reaction usually what happens during the first pregnancy at the time of the delivery antigen antibodies reaction take place so that positive that enters into the mother against which the mother's body produce antibodies now for the second pregnancy we have a mother in which rh negative is the blood group but with that we have existing antibodies from the previous pregnancy from the previous foyer again the second baby may be normal but it may have any type of the disease depending upon the severity of the antigen antibody reaction now the damage to the fetus may starts from just simple anemia or um, some more severe anemia or if there is strong um, antigen antibody reaction 
it may have anemia and other bleeding disorders like that actually the erythroblastosis vitalis is the extreme of this antigen antibody reaction which can happen on the first pregnancy even during first pregnancy also if the antigen cross during pregnancy and produce antibodies in the mother and then coming back to the fetus if this happens usually this not happens but it may happen so in the succeeding pregnancies the chances for the mother and the fetus that increases for the antigen antibody reaction in the third same story in the fourth same story the rh negative mother having her first rh positive child usually does not develop sufficient anti rh and glutenin to cause any harm as usually no blood enters into mother circulation but mind it it is not fixed it may happen usually it not happens clinical pictures may have just simple anemia or anemia with jaundice or liver and spleen and greatly enlarged all these signs and symptoms that depends upon the severity of the antigen and antibody reaction it is not fixed can it is may can occur it is a very very specific disease condition in which there will be severe anemia erythroblastosis vitalis and it may lead to the death of the child many children who barely survive the anemia exit permanent mental impairment or damage to the motor areas of the brain because of precipitation of the bilirubin in the neuronal cells due to underdeveloped blood brain barrier causing kern ictus so it is an other special type of the condition disease condition due to the mismatch rh incompatibility mismatch rh group with erythroblastosis vitalis but this includes especially the neuronal cells how we can stop this chain how we can treat again the treatment is to give the ntd injection to the mother here we have fetus and mother both regarding fetus it will be a he or she will be treated accordingly either the slight anemia or anemia with jaundice or how much the damage occurs to the fetus accordingly we will treat the fetus or newborn regarding mother we will give the ntd injection within 72 hours to deal with this antibodies so that to neutralize all these one once we give ntd injection to the mother all the antibodies all this reaction between antigen antibody reaction that subsides and the mother is again rh negative as before first pregnancy so if second time she is pregnant she will be as same to the first pregnancy so for the treatment we will give regarding mother we will give ntd injection regarding newborn we will treat he uh, him or herself accordingly 
according to the sign and symptom depending upon the damage to the fetus. Treatment is to replace the neonate's blood with Rh negative blood. This is a very again specific point why we are giving Rh negative blood to Rh positive baby. His own blood is Rh positive. We should give Rh positive but why we are giving Rh negative blood? It is because we want to just maintain the blood volume. The aim is as we know that antigens antibody reaction take place in neonates body. If we inject Rh positive that will be useless, it will be wasted. And what happens? The actual blood volume that will be decreased. So to maintain the blood volume of the baby, we give Rh negative blood in which no antigen, no antibody. It is just simple. It is, it is given just to maintain the blood volume of the newborn unless or until the antigen antibodies which enters into the neonate's body and causing antigen antibody reaction that stops antibodies which have entered they are going to react with the Rh positive antigens and un unless and until the all the antigens they are reacted with these antibodies so that all antigens completely reacted and there will be no antigen antibody reaction all antibodies that will be utilized up till that we are going to we should maintain the blood volume that's why we give Rh negative to the baby just to maintain the blood volume meanwhile all antibodies they are utilized or they are reacted completely abolished from the newborn neonates circulation then the baby is own blood group that will create more Rh positive so that slowly the baby becomes able to maintain himself and then we stop the Rh transfusion, Rh negative transfusion. With that we can give phototherapy and some type of the drug also for as assistance to this basic treatment. How we can prevent it? Again, NTD injection the D antigen is the primary cause of the disease. So NTD injection that can save the complication. Once this happens, this is the treatment of prevention for uh, to prevent the further damage in succeeding pregnancies to the fetus. So previously we have discussed the treatment regarding new needs and NTD injection that is the treatment regarding mother. This you can see the NTD injection which should be given within 72 hours. Now some uh, small topics uh, remaining uh, uh, which I should uh, uh, discuss. One of them is the how you are going to determine the blood group that can uh, that will be discussed uh, during your practical classes. So some uh, just few words about the stored plasma and uh, stored blood, uh, how it is stored and uh, what are other complications and one more the remaining thing that is the secretors and non-secretors. So who are these persons? Regarding the stored plasma, plasma can be stored in the liquid form for many months. 
If tried, it can be kept for years and under all conditions or temperature, it can be reconstituted by the by adding sterile water. Plasma is of great value in traumatic shock, as we know. The conditional plasma can be given in a very large volume without fear of agglutinating the recipient stem cell and was originally prepared for, from large pools representing many donors and some batches carried the virus of the infective hepatitis. For this is a transfusion with the polysaccharide extin is preferred by many. What is the use of the stored blood? Obviously, in, uh, uh, during any uh, injuring, the patient can need during any surgical operation or when, uh, the patient can need huge amount of the blood. For that we have the blood banks where we store the blood. Before transfusion we must know about how the blood is stored in these places and how we use blood before transfusion. As we know they are kept in cold condition and before transfusion the blood should be come to uh, should be warm and uh, its temperature should be according to the room temperature the blood transfusion is the ideal treatment for severe hemorrhage when given promptly and in adequate amounts uh, what happens that uh, transfusion even and the amount of blood used for each transfusion as it has become necessary to steward the blood bank where blood stored at 4 C 4 degrees centigrade is always available. Red cells undergo, this is a very important thing. Red cells undergo rapid changes during storage in simple citrus solution even at 4 degrees in centigrade. They are preserved much longer in the presence of glucose. The chief effect of glucose however is to provide a substrate for the metabolism. During cold storage, reduction of metabolism decreases active transport and cations move with the concentration gradient so that cell potassium falls, plasma potassium rises from the normal that is value is 4.5 millimoles per liter or 20 or 30 millimoles per liter in two weeks time while cell sodium normally about 12 millimoles rises to 30 to 40 millimoles per liter or we can say that in uh, changes in the potassium and the sodium concentration as a result uh, if it is uh, uh, not kept in our mind um, as a result the cells swell and become shorter and fatter more uh, spherocity and in, in consequence they undergo hemolysis more readily so um, before transfusion we should know that they are stored at which temperature how they should be maintained in the blood banks and before transfusion we have to maintain its temperature properly now coming on last topic that is the secretors and non secretors what are these person the people who secrete the antigens into body fluids such as saliva sweat digestive secretion breast milk or tears they are called secretors while the individuals who do not secrete blood group antigen into the body fluid, they are called non-secretors. So that is the thing. Um, you must know what are these persons, what are the secretors and non-secretors. And this is the this for an ABO group, um, blood group antigens, uh, as they um, they are in the saliva and other human body tissues uh, secretions. And so for that we must know what are the secretors and non-secretors and with that we complete our today's lecture so inshallah in um, following lectures um, I will come to you with the new topic up till that thank you and Allah Hafiz